Big moves in the markets this week as the bull market trend continues for cryptocurrencies. I'm your host Jackson at Cointelegraph and today I'm talking to Eric Crown, trader and market analyst. We're going to be covering the all-time highs in Bitcoin and Ethereum this week. We'll talk about the Coinbase listing and what that means for cryptocurrencies in 2021. And we'll answer the question, when and at what price will we see a top to this bull market cycle? Stay tuned and find out. But before that, be sure to hit the like button and subscribe to our channel. This week, Bitcoin and Ethereum made new all-time highs, XRP pumped to nearly $2, and Coinbase was publicly listed on NASDAQ. All in all, this was a pretty big week for crypto. So do you see this um, This is a liftoff for like another um, upward trend or another wave in this bull cycle? Yeah, I do actually. I am still bullish here. I think I'll still be bullish for a little bit of time. I do think I'd like to differentiate myself from uh, many people in this market as I don't necessarily think that Bitcoin's going to get to like those crazier numbers on this current run right here. I think we're already pretty damn hot on this one, but uh, does it still have some more to go? Yeah, I, I, I do believe so. I think that Bitcoin's actually lifting off pretty much right now. I don't see any real reason why it won't get to the deeper $60,000 targets, like 69 to 70,000 bucks. And, uh, you know, maybe within the next, uh, you know, by end of year, I wouldn't be surprised to see Bitcoin maybe even gun for six digits. But at the end of the day, I do want to come back down to reality because I see a lot of people out there like calling for, you know, a million dollars plus, which is, I mean, maybe over time, yes, but within the next year, I do think that it's important to kind of keep things uh, more or less grounded, which I, I don't think that's in the cards, like by the end of this year, for example. Plan B, you know, the uh, famous creator of Bitcoin stock to flow model, still thinks also that there is some steam left in the cycle. He calculated that if Bitcoin's relative strength index were to hit levels similar to 2017, Bitcoin could close April at $92,000. What do you make of that assessment? I really like Plan B. I think he. I've I've learned a lot from him by kind of studying his uh, his material. Now, ninety two thousand or ninety four thousand, whatever the number was by the end of this month. I think that's a. I I wouldn't be comfortable saying that myself. No. Um, what I would be comfortable saying though, uh, looking at the RSI, which I believe he's looking at a level of like 94 or 95, which correlates with the last few cycles, uh, major highs, essentially it's more or less a warning signal. So what would also flow after that is he'd essentially be calling a top at those levels, looking for what traditionally has been in the past. Uh, every time that we've seen some like that, a 70 to 80% subsequent drop over the next year or two, uh, after that signal is kind of met. For myself, I'm watching a few of the things that I think are a little bit more important in conjunction with the RSI. You know, it's a fine tool, but uh, but I do think that it needs to be combined with other things. I want to see, uh, of course, volatility. I want to see if volatility gets into some of the crazier numbers. We almost are not almost always. We have always seen, and this is just true for general market uh, knowledge, that anytime you're approaching a major high or a major low, you want to see volatility really get up there, really redline. And then also the third portion, I think just something relatively simple to kind of be looking for would be anything uh, resembling a weekly reversal as that has always gotten the macro moves in Bitcoin. To be fair, means you're not going to get the ultimate top or the ultimate bottom in that case, but it will keep you in those long momentous drives that typically last, you know, a year plus. Gathering from what we've been saying so far, it seems like Bitcoin is approaching some kind of top soon, given the RSI and given the other factors that you were specifically talking about. Um, and yet we still have these predictions about Bitcoin reaching $100,000 by the end of the year. So do you see like if we top in in the next month or so, um, as indicators seem to be suggesting, um, do we still have the chance to reach that 100K mark by the end of the year if we're going to see um, an, a 70% drop over the next year after that top? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, these things can happen rather fast, especially in very uh, immature markets like Bitcoin. I mean, we have to remind ourselves that realistically, Bitcoin's market cap is still what? It's some maybe like somewhere around one trillion. I actually don't know the exact number off the top of my head. I know the full market's like two trillion. But put that in context with something that, you know, is rather antiquated, but uh, but relevant, and that would be gold. And what's its market cap? Like eight or nine trillion? I, I think it was like close to 10, but, you know, it also got the rug pulled out of it recently as well. And uh, and so putting those those two things together, 
you know, I do think that Bitcoin has long term, a long ways to go, but it is rather young right now. And we have seen in the past, especially in the, if I pull up my charts over here, I don't know if you want me to show charts or not, but, um, but if we do go back to, uh, you know, the 2013, 2014 cycle, there was actually a clear 70% downside move from the high of about 250 on April, 2013, all the way down to the low of about 80 bucks in, uh, in July, 2013. And then it reversed to basically go up another 500, 600% in the same year to the ultimate high. Do I think that we could see something like that somewhere uh, on this run? Yeah, I do think so, actually. Yes. But uh, I do think after that first sort of one, one of those monolithic targets gets hit, you know, like a hundred thousand bucks, I'm looking anywhere between about 90 to 111,000 bucks. Um, you know, I do think we're going to see one of those nasty reversals. A lot of people are going to be baptized in blood probably <laughs> and, uh, and then continue on with the party, you know, a little bit later. I don't really see any real reason, uh, fundamentally speaking, while the market would, you know, reverse for the long term here. I mean, obviously macro, it's mostly been an uptrend. And uh, I still think that Bitcoin has a lot of things to look forward to in the future, like an ETF. I think that that's very possible by uh, end of this year, very likely uh, at the very least by next year. All the infrastructure is being built up right now, and that really legitimizes this as an asset, which I think is very important. I, I think that's a nice little segue into talking about the Coinbase news, which happened this week. Um, I'm sure you have some opinions about it. Um, Coinbase directly listed on NASDAQ, making it the first crypto exchange to do so and the first major crypto or one of the first major cryptocurrency companies to do so. Um, the CEO of crypto asset management firm Script believes this is a huge milestone for the crypto space. Do you buy into that hype? 100%. Yes, it's a huge it is a huge deal. Now, is it huge within the context of like crypto Twitter where people <laughs> go a little bit off the deep end and start, you know, saying, "Okay, well now we're going to 2 million bucks." Uh no, I'm I'm not on that side, but I do think it's a very important thing. It builds up the legitimacy of this asset. It started with CME Futures uh, uh 3 yeah, about 3 years ago now. Um, in December, uh, yeah, December 2017. And that, that laid the foundation for the traditional world to kind of integrate Bitcoin into it. And I've been saying for a while now, and I think, I think a lot of reasonable people think this as well, is that the true end game for Bitcoin isn't necessarily like the crypto anarchist view, which I love that Peter Brandt made that term, I think is genius. Uh, that's cool. That's great. I'm glad that people are, you know, really uh, gung ho about, you know, uh, Bitcoin. It is cool. It's great. It's great as technology. However, um, at the end of the day, I don't think that most people want that. Most people don't want to be their own bank. Most people don't want that responsibility. Most people want the exposure to Bitcoin without having the risk that you might incur, you know, especially pre all of these events. Um, and then now we see obviously Coinbase getting uh, legitimized. Uh, it's getting absolutely astronomical valuations. I do think that there's going to be some downside there. Yeah. But, uh, but long term, it's a very good thing. And now we even see uh, mini futures for CME as well for Bitcoin and, and uh, CBOs talking about listing Bitcoin futures again and also options. I mean, this is all very good stuff because it, what it allows is it allows, you know, more traditional investors who typically hold more money and, and bigger, you know, quant firms and bigger uh, money managers to have more security with, with the means that they typically know, which is hedging. And that's the whole purpose of these derivative contracts. Um, on top of that, you know, with the whole Coinbase uh, thing, you know, it opens up the it open up it opens up more roads for more exchanges, and I mean, they're just <laughs> I mean, these things these things are so valuable right now. It's 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 actually insane. But uh, an ETF down the road is is very much not out of the question, and that's just going to allow it's just going to be another venue to get your money into this asset, get some exposure. And Coinbase itself being listed on there is really great, especially for you know people who are uh, more 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 akin to like the I wouldn't say the older way of doing things but like just the usual way of doing things. You know, for example, if you were a gold investor, you don't just invest in spot gold. You also get a gold ETF. You also get the gold miners. Now you can basically do the same thing with, uh, with Bitcoin with, by buying Coinbase. Is it, at the end of the day though, I mean, are these things like really diversification within the actual asset? Not really. I mean, we see the whole damn market moving with each other. You know, if you, you got you to be looking at NASDAQ, you got to be looking at SPY, you got to be looking at Dow Jones all at the same time. And they've all been going moon mode as well. And uh, Bitcoin gets to fall. So everything in this world gets to rally as long as we're kind of stuck within this current, you know, fundamental narrative of, uh, I guess, the new normal, as you say. Yeah, those are some good points that I think were echoed um, by a lot of other people in terms of, you know, giving Bitcoin more exposure to traditional market instruments which was what Coinbase does. Um, but, I, but I recently spoke to Mike McGlone, uh, Bloomberg's Bitcoin strategist, and he seemed pretty confident that 
we would see a Bitcoin ETF this year and possibly even within the next three months. What are your thoughts on that? I, I agree with him. I've been saying this for the last few years that 2021 is very, very likely. I think by end of year, it, it is certainly not out of the question. And if I had to guess, if I was going to give some very strange uh, prediction here, it would be something like this, kind of alluding to our conversation earlier. You know, does Bitcoin top out after hitting one of these crazier numbers in the deeper uh, or some, somewhere around like close to six digits? Uh, yeah, you know, I think so. And then comes down and then an ETF, you know, starts to get populated into the news cycle. And then the whole thing kind of begins again. And an ETF would be a bigger, you know, deal, obviously, than Coinbase getting listed to begin with. An ETF really is, I suppose, like that, that is, you know, you've gotten everything that you want at that point, pretty much. And, uh, and that will really be a major hype cycle, uh, definitely bigger than, of, of course, Coinbase, definitely bigger than CME futures. It'll be the, it'll be the most important thing that's happened in this, uh, in this asset class um, that I can think of. I want to turn over to Ethereum, but it made a new all-time uh, high this week in anticipation of the Berlin hard fork. The hard fork update aims to address some of the transaction fee issues that have been plaguing the Ethereum network this year. Um, despite these issues, billionaire entrepreneur Mark Cuban believes Ethereum is as close as we have to a true currency. Do you think Ethereum's thus far unresolved transaction fee and scalability issues will have a negative impact on ETH's growth in 2021? Um, this is a very interesting question. Uh, the, uh, the answer that I'd give is no, because I think that most people uh, either are unaware of these things or do not care. And they probably believe that uh, the, the, you know, the developers within Ethereum, they probably just trust that they're going to resolve these issues over time anyways. It's essentially baked in. I mean, I'm looking at Ethereum right now and uh, nothing bearish about that chart. <laughs> you know, in fact, if, I, you know, if I'm making a corollary to Bitcoin, that actually makes me believe we, we kind of just lift off from here anyways. Um, you, know, you see this whole market move together right now and uh, ethereum's kind of leading i suppose and that one uh you know regardless of what the of 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 kind of the scenario that you just presented there uh at the end of the day man um there is nothing bearish about that chart so i'd have to say i, I don't think that people are are they're either not concerned with it or they believe that it's going to be resolved anyways uh, you know, similar to like, uh, you know, naysayers for Bitcoin who are worried about like, I don't know, quantum computers, for example, like they figure that the Bitcoin developers, they're going to figure out that issue before that becomes like a widespread issue to begin with. Interesting comparison, um, although I think high transaction fees already exist, whereas quantum computers, I don't think, present as much of a very true, uh, very true, yes. you know, <laughs> immediate threat to the Bitcoin network. Um, but you said that Ethereum is uh, leading the market or looks to be leading the market. Do you think that uh, ETH has more upside potential than Bitcoin this year? Um, does it have more upside potential? Uh, yes, it does. Just because for the simple fact that it hasn't run up as much uh, as Bitcoin just yet, Bitcoin typically kind of sets the tone for the macro cycles and then altcoins follow in general degrees of relative strength. I mean, we have a rotational market going on. And actually to kind of go back to that to that prior question, I, I, do, feel, I do feel like it kind of deserves a little bit more attention. Um, the other reason why I say that is that most cryptos, I mean, they're just getting free rides right now. You know, if you're just in the crypto space, you get to go to the moon pretty much. Um, people don't care about the underlying technology for the most part. You know, you, we have that whole meme within this market. Where it's like, I'm here for the technology. Most people are not. Uh, most people don't use these things on a day-to-day -day basis. Most people have no interest in that. They just look at this as speculative assets, which is fair enough. I mean, that's, you know, that's, that's keeping the whole thing going. I mean, look at uh, Doggy Coin, for example, right? Doggy Coin goes to the moon, <laughs> you know, do, do people think that there's something going on there? I don't believe that they, uh, it, correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't believe that they develop on it anymore. Uh, I could be wrong in that certainly, but my point is, is that like obvious things that really, I'm not so sure have any intrinsic value is a whole loaded uh, term to begin with, but um, you know, it's, it's just like Ethereum's issues or perceived issues just don't really seem to really, I, I'd imagine they really don't even cross most people's minds. I think, I think that's a fair assessment. Um, do you have any particular targets for ETH that you're looking at for this year? 
Uh, oh, I mean like short-term, medium-term, I'm looking uh, just under 3000 bucks. I think that's a big one. Uh, of course, long-term, you know, you're going to have your psychological numbers after that point. I mean, if Bitcoin really gets going, I don't see any real reason why Ethereum can't get to 5,000. Uh, I know a lot of people are talking about 10,000 bucks as well. I mean, in this market, you know, anything's possible, right? Uh, is it probable? I don't know about this year. I think over time there's, I don't really see, see any real reason why not, but uh, for this year, um, I'd say three thousand is is very very likely. Uh, Five thousand, I, I think, is uh, is strong strong probability as well. Uh, mostly depends on what Bitcoin does. If Bitcoin starts to reverse, then you got to start to hold your breath for everything else, as it typically does. Uh, you know, set the tone. Yep, yep. And then, if less when we see the ETF, it's lift off time, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there you go. Right. Um, but you did mention Doggy Coin, aka Doge, uh, earlier, and I did want to touch on that briefly. Um, in terms of the whole, you know, the underlying technology doesn't really matter. This is a prime example of that sentiment in the market, where it, we see these, and we've seen it before, um, these kind of media hype cycles that drive price action. Um, the the previous events where this happened were with the GameStop Robin Hood craze, where uh, the traders got locked out of GameStop by Robinhood, and then everyone kind of flooded into Doge, you know? Time to pump the coin to make some money because you can't on GameStop. Something like this, right? Um, and so the pumpamentals are on full display, um, particularly in Doge, it's the epitome of that scenario. Um, in, on April 14th, in just 24 hours, the meme coin soared 80%. Uh, and made it into the top ten cryptos by market capitalization. But what are, what are your what are your opinions on this kind of like strictly pumpamental coin? Why is this in such an outlet for this like pent up trader? Energy. Well, I mean, there's there's like a good actual grassroots following on that one, funnily enough. Um, but everything in the market kind of gets a free ride. Do that. We saw the same thing in the 2013, 2014 cycle. We saw the same thing in 2017. Uh, Doggy coin is is no different than anything else, in my opinion. It's just the what is impressive about it is actually that it has remained uh, somewhat relevant over time. I think that's just because you know who doesn't love that? Who doesn't love that meme? Like it's it's one of the funniest ones. You know, it's it survived for a very long time. So. Uh, you know, with that, I don't, I don't think that it means anything for the underlying technology or at least very little. I think that people at, uh, just in general are looking for something that is, you know, cheap, right? And, uh, and they see, you know, uh, I think it's trading at like, what, 10 cents now? No, 13, Jesus Christ, 13, 13 cents. <laughs> Yeah, okay, this is just absurd, but uh, there's no, I, I actually think that it's probably going to go higher just looking at this chart right here. <laughs> that is just absurd, man. But yeah, you know, every, everything gets a free ride in this market. Uh, when Bitcoin's bullish, every, you know, everyone gets to rally up. And I, I, I figure that's what we're seeing with Doggy Coin. I feel that's what we're seeing just across the market. You're seeing all of the coins that pretty much got sold off like 90 plus percent, in some cases, 99 percent from the 2017 cycle. They're getting their rallies in too. But uh, Doggy Coin, actually, funnily enough, this one is like a known pump and dump. It still will pump and it still will very likely dump as well. So, you know, it's 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 the same game. Uh, it's, you know, I, I wouldn't expect any different resolution at the end of the day, though. When Bitcoin reverses, this one very likely does too. Awesome. Any final thoughts for our audience? Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I, I would say this. Um, I don't want to be the uh, I, I don't want to be the the mega moon boy. I don't want to be the mega doom boy. At the end of the day, you know this market remains bullish. I don't see any real reason why it's not right now. Uh, you know, we look at this every day on my live stream on my channel, and you know, it, in, until we see some signals of you know of, of you know of a major long term top. I don't think that there's any real threat of you know the rug being pulled under uh, from this asset as it stands right now. And like I said, there's a few other big things to be looking at in the not so distant horizon. So, you know, while I do think that things are getting rather hot, uh, and while I would definitely want to kind of step back from the more egregious uh, moon boys out there and also doom boys as well, I do think that Bitcoin still has you know uh, at least a little bit more of upside here, a decent amount most likely. I wouldn't be surprised to see six digits this year, and um, and then you know just kind of handle it from there. Until I see a weekly reversal, I will not be calling a high. I will not be really pulling out at least of spot markets for that time and uh, just trying to enjoy the ride. And with that said, I just want to say massive thank you for having me on. Uh, it's been an absolute pleasure. I really enjoy being here and uh, thank you. Lovely. Thank you for joining us, Eric.
Thank you everyone for watching. That was Eric Crown, trader and market analyst. I'm your host Jackson at Cointelegraph, and if you enjoyed the video, please hit that like button and subscribe to our channel so we can bring you more informational and awesome videos like this one.